Today is Friday. Y'all know what that means. Classic Tabletop RPG Friday. Oh yeah, getting into Dark Conspiracy once again. And we are in combat today. And that means end of series. For those of you who might be new, anytime we do a classic tabletop RPG series and we begin combat, that is the cue. We're getting close to the end of the series. However, with Dark Conspiracy, it's going to take a little while because combat is involved. It is very involved. As a matter of fact, from now, so what are we in? September? Until the beginning of 2025, God willing, folks, we're going to be in combat on Fridays. Now there'll be a couple of Fridays in there. There'll be some different things. So I'm going to mix it up. But most of this is going to be combat because it is very, very involved, y'all. Very involved. And then at the end of this video, as always, we have the question of the vid. So I'm going to try to keep it as short and sweet and do this in baby steps, right? So not every video is going to be this long video. We're just going to chop it up a little bit and go as fast as we possibly can. So let's get started right now and road that transition. So when it comes to combat movement, there are four modes of combat movement, and this is just for humans. So we're not talking about beasts or robots or vehicles or anything like that just humans, because that's what you're gonna be. And we already went over that in character creation. So the first mode would be crawling. Second is walking. Third is trotting. And the fourth is running. Now, when they created the game, they did the measurements of each mode in meters. But I'm gonna give you a suggestion on what the feet should be if you're living here in the United States. So, with the first one, it's crawling and it's two meters. And I suggest five feet. And that is going to become very apparent as we keep moving through this. Now, the second one is eight meters. And I suggest 25 feet if you are living here in the United States. The next is trotting. Now, trotting is going to be 15 meters. And I suggest 50 feet. And then next, is going to be running, which is going to be 30 meters, and I suggest 100 feet. So those are the four modes and the distances for each. However, when it comes to how you're going to represent that, you're going to do it in one of two environments. You're either going to do it in a live environment with a battle map, or you're going to do it in a virtual environment with a virtual tabletop. Now, some people are not going to do it at all, they're going to do all that with theater of the mind, which I think is a mistake. It just takes people out of the immersion. But if there's not a lot going on, you could do that. But if there is something going on and you want to immerse your players more and do the work, just like my friend said, don't be a lazy GM, do the work. Then you're going to lay out a battle map in either a virtual or live environment. So let's go ahead. I'll show you how that would work in a live environment first, and then we'll go ahead and see how that works in a virtual environment. Okay, what we have here is a live setting. This is a just plain old battle map, and I have a couple little props here. These are kind of like bushes, or they could be trees. I mean, depending on which one you want to say that they are. This one here actually is a tree, if you can look at it. We're going to say that that's a tree and we're going to put that tree right there. So I have two situations here in terms of movement and we're going to use this guy and this is from a Marvel game. So as I said, using a grid in a live session is going to be a whole lot quicker for you because when you're trying to move things with a ruler and things like that, because that's old school when you used to, you know, take a ruler and go from one side to the other or something crazy like that, that's just will take you really out of the immersion. So if you want to do this and do it quickly, then use that grid. So we're going to say that our man here is hiding from this robot over here, and he wants to hide behind maybe these trees over here. All right, so 
how far can he move in this phase? Well, we're going to say that he is going to probably trot because of how far he needs to move. Or could he walk? Uh, let me see. If he walked, it would be 25 feet. And that would be five of these because we're doing this in feet because we're in America. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, or he can go one, two, three, four, five. You move diagonal here. Hmm, let's do that. So he would be one, two, three, four. He could move totally behind here. So if this android is walking, then it would be five as well. So we say one, two, three, four, I don't know, five. And now it just scans around. But as you can see, the grid makes it a whole lot faster. No measuring of anything, just counting the actual squares and then multiplying it by whatever the base distance is for each square. That's it. Now, one thing that you need to be very careful of is rolling dice rolling dice do not roll dice on your battle map please get one of these dice trays <laughs> put it on the edge of the map like this or something and roll it in the dice tray and just actually you want to pretty much keep it further away from that so it'll be off of the screen here just because you just if you just happen to be very clumsy and don't roll the dice inside of the dice tray and it pops out and goes under the floor, it can do that onto the actual floor and not to the map and then knock over everything that you have on the map and then you guys have to go, oh man, you know, you have to put everything back where you had it before. Yeah, let's not do that. Get yourself a dice tray. This right here is a Shivea dice tray. They're extremely cheap. I'll have a link for it down in the description so you can go ahead and buy them if you don't have it. And that just should be staple at the moment, folks. But this is it. This is what you would have as your battle map and your grid system here on a live session. But now let's go to a virtual session. And it is much different than in a live session. Hey, let me go ahead and interrupt myself here. And I want to encourage you to join the Leap Squad. Now, you guys have seen me talk about the Leap Squad quite a bit on the channel. But it dawned on me, I'm like, maybe I have not actually explain the benefit of joining the elite squad well so i want to take the time real quick to do that right now and i'm going to list three benefits of joining the elite squad number one of course there's that monthly giveaway that i talk about all the time and i recently changed this there's still a monthly giveaway but i did change it if you were part of the elite squad you would know that but that's not the best benefit not in my eye the best benefit is of course the community Having access to our private chat server and being directly connected to others in the Leap Nation. You guys can talk about things and we have all these different channels over on the server. So if you want to talk about art, if you want to talk about movies, if you want to talk about tabletop RPG maps, if you want to talk about virtual tabletop, and of course, if you want to talk about those non-fantasy alternative genre tabletop RPGs, which have all of their separate rooms, you can do that over in our private chat server. And it's just having that connection in a casual environment that no drama. And really, maybe you want to, you know, throw something back and forth at people, ideas and things like that. This is the place to be. And there's a lot of people in there that have been doing this for quite a long time that would be more than willing to help you out now another thing too is that you need to be part of the lead squad in order to get access to that private chat server otherwise you gotta go bye bye sorry that's just the way that it is that's my condition of being a part of this great community and then there's the third benefit which is getting early access to those things that we have going on in the rpg elite network and let me tell you, there is something right now that's going on that you guys don't know nothing about. And it's been going on for a couple of months now. And if you want to get in on these things early, because we got more than a little bit planned, then you can if you're part of the Leap Squad. All right, then. So since I laid out the three benefits, maybe if you 
like what you hear now, you might want to join. How do you do that? Simple. Down in the description, there is a link. That link, yeah, that one that just flashed across the screen. <laughs> Click that link. The first one you're going to see is going to take you to a landing page over on that landing page. There are going to be a space there. You're going to fill in your name. You're going to put your email address in and then you're going to crush the blue button and that'll be it. You will be part of the Leap Squad. So I, I, I hope I went ahead and explained this a little bit better for you and that you will consider joining the Leap Squad today. All right, enough of me. Let me get back to uh. Okay, so here we are in a virtual environment. We've got this Biolabs map from Frag Maps. That's my boy over there. Yeah, he be putting it down with these maps. Thank you, Frag Maps. And if you're not familiar, his link is down in the description if you want to go and give him some love. He's got dope maps over there, y'all. So if you want to do his Patreon, really highly suggest that you go and get him. Hand-drawn maps, awesome stuff. But anyway, so this is Marcus Camden. Remember him? Way back when we did character creation. Haven't seen that video? That's okay. Link for that will be, of course, down in the description. This is Marcus, and we're going to do some combat movement in a virtual environment like this. And this is how it would work in pretty much any game that you have. Now, we know what the movement rates are. In feet, it's five feet per square. But as you can see, I have no grid on here. I like to keep it clean and fresh i could put a grid on here so let me go ahead and do that right now so just so you guys could see it uh i don't like it but if you wanted to go with a grid and move just like you would in a live environment you could but i don't like that so i'm gonna move that back make it gridless and so we just really get into the environment. No grid, just kind of obscuring things, just really into the map. But let's say that Camden, he wants to move, and we're going to say he wants to move over here to this computer desk over here. All right, so, and it's combat, right? So he's going to run over here and maybe duck behind this desk. So how would he do that? How would you measure that? When in Foundry, which is what I'm in right now, and you would have to figure this out for whatever you're in, but in Foundry, it, they, they pretty much all work kind of sort of the same. So in Foundry, I'm just going to measure it out just like this, right? How far would it take? So I'm going to go there, move it about right there, and then I'm going to move right about, I'll move 20 feet. I can probably move about 20 feet. Yeah, right there and probably move about another 10 probably to get me here that'll get me beyond there actually so you got 10 20 10 so i need to move 40 feet which means i need to trot over here all right fair enough now the cool thing about this is that we've got this mapped out and as you can see you can move make turns and all the rest of this stuff and you can just measure it straight out and then you'll know okay well i'll need to trot over there in my next turn or phase or whatever and then you just push the space bar and he moves and it's just that simple and he'll duck behind this desk because maybe somebody's shooting from him over here or maybe over here or something like that who knows you never know but movement is so much more precise and also it gets the players involved more in what's going on on the map which again that immerses them more. They begin to move things. They begin to plan things. They have to pay attention. All of that. Now, personally, I like either or. I like either. I like live and a virtual environment. It's a it's a different kind of flay for each. You can be a little bit more immersed in the virtual environment. I'm just saying. But if you set it up right, a live environment is just as immersive if you are willing to do the work. Combat movement. Yeah, we didn't go over too much today, but we went over enough because like I said, we're gonna take this in baby steps. We've got a lot to cover in this series. And so I don't wanna have too much in one video, just trying to get through it. We're gonna take this nice and slow. Hey, if you got any value out of this video today, could you do me a favor? And could you just crush that like button? 
Also, if you want to stick around with the Elite Nation here at RPG Elite, you can do that quite simply, y'all, by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. You know, technically, right now, I'm not here. You wanna know why? Because it is me and my wife's 27th wedding anniversary. 27 years. Actually, it's 28 years that we've been together, but 27 years, over a quarter of a century. Come on, y'all. Come on, son. That's dopeness. I can't wait to get to 30, God willing, y'all. I have a most wonderful wife in the world. And I just needed to make that mention. I just, I had to, I had to. All right, y'all. So after all of that, let's get to the question of the vid. The question of the vid is this. How do you like your combat? Do you like it crunchy? Ooh, details here and there. Or do you like it kind of medium? Uh, you don't like too many details, but you like just enough details so that it doesn't take away from the story. Or maybe you just like it light, because you just like it fast. You don't want to get too into it. You know, you just want to keep things moving, or you just don't really like having too much combat or maps or anything like that. Just total theater of the mind, because you're a lazy GM. Okay. <laughs> I'm just messing. No, I'm not actually. But anyway, how do you like your combat? Let's get some engagement going down in the comments below. And you know what that means, folks. That means I'm done. That's it. It's time for me to say bye-bye and do my snaggle puss. So like this, hey, if you've got a game going on this weekend, y'all, then happy gaming. I pray it is an RPG Elite session that is more meaningful, more enjoyable, and more immersive. So until next time, God willing, it's me, your boy servant saying peace. Woo! 5,000 leaps. That never gets old to me. <laughs> it just, I don't think it'll ever get old to me, but uh, I gotta go. I'm out.